Hello everyone, welcome back to Shawcode, and in this video we're going to be adding a tile map to our game. Um, so as you can see, in the last episode we added some movement to our little uh, red square. Uh, but in this episode what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding some walls to our game, and we're going to be using a tile map. So it's going to be made up of little individual tiles, and we can place the walls on those tiles. So yeah, let's get right into it. So first things first, we're going to want to actually create our tile map and basically the tile map is just going to be a list and what we're going to do is we're going to go into the config and here we can just write tile map then let's create a list here our tile map is going to have rows and it's also going to have columns so it's basically like a grid because our height is 480 pixels and each tile is going to be 32 pixels 480 divided by 32 is going to be 15 so we're going to have 15 rows on our tile map and each row is just going to be a string so I'm just going to copy this 14 more times so here we have our 15 rows so in each row we're going to have 20 columns because our height up here is 640 divided by 32 we get 20 so we're going to need 20 columns in here we're just going to have a wall surrounding the outer perimeter and then we can have our player and we can also have some walls on the inside um, so to represent our walls, what we're going to have is we're going to have a letter B. And basically a B, it'll just stand for like block or whatever. But for every B in our tile map, we're going to place a wall there. So I'm going to have at the top, I'm going to have 20 Bs. So 20 Bs on the top row for our top wall. And we're going to have the same at the bottom as well. I'm going to have Bs going down uh, the left and right sides as well. But in the center of those, we can just have dots to represent that there's going to be nothing there. So we're going to have a B and then 18 dots and then another B at the end. So that will make 20 in total. So like that, and we can just repeat this for every row we have. You might sort of be able to see now, we're going to have our top wall here. Then we can have a left and right wall going down here and we'll have a bottom wall as well. So you can see we've just got a couple of walls that will act as obstacles in our, in our grid. The Bs are going to represent the wall, and the dots are going to represent nothing, so we might just have like some grass there or whatever. And we need to represent the player, and the player, will we can just represent it with a P. So right here, we'll be spawning in a player. So now that we've sorted out the tile map, we should probably get to work on making our wall class. And basically we'll end up colliding with it, and it, it'll just act as a wall, like a little obstacle basically. So I'm going to have a class, and let's just call it block, um, and it's going to inherit from Pygame Sprite. So um, Pygame.Sprite.Sprite, okay, and then we're going to need the init method, like with any class, and it's going to ne need self. It's also going to need the game, um, so we'll be able to access everything in here from the block class. We're all it's also going to need an X position, and it's also going to need a Y position. Okay, so in the init method, we'll just do self.game equals game. Then, of course, we're going to need to self.underscore layer. And I've explained what this does before, but basically, if you're going to be using, um, if you're going to be using layered updates, which is a form of sprite group in Pygame, uh, you need to tell the, you need to tell Pygame, uh, in which layer the sprite is going to appear. So it might be at the bottom layer, or it might be at the top layer, or it might be somewhere in the middle. And because it's a block layer, we don't want it at the bottom, that's where our grass might go. Uh, but we don't want it at the top either, because our player will probably go there. We want it somewhere in the middle. So here, we'll have, pl uh, we'll have block underscore layer, and we'll set that to 1, and then we'll change the player layer to 2. The player will be at the top, and the block will be just below that. So now that we've set the uh, block layer, we can just assign some groups to the block. So self.groups equals self.game.all underscore sprites. And this is just a sprite group that has literally all the sprites in it. And then we'll also want self.game.blocks. And you might remember self.blocks right here. It's another group. Basically, this will be useful when we're testing like collisions so when the player might collide with a wall, we'll want to check to see if all the blocks have been collided with. So that's it for the groups, and we'll also want to go pygames.sprite.sprite.underscore underscore init. 
underscore underscore, and we'll have self and self dot groups. And this is just the calling the init method for the inherited class of pygame.sprite.sprite. .sprite. By passing self dot groups, we're adding the block class to all the sprite groups that we've said here. We're obviously going to want an x position, and we're also going to want a y position, so we can set self dot x equals to x, and then we'll multiply it by tile size. Self dot y equals y times tile size as well. It wants to be 32 pixels wide, so self dot width equals tile size, and self dot height equals tile size as well. So it's going to be a square with a width of 32 pixels by 32 pixels. And now self dot image pygame dot surface, and it's going to have self dot width and self dot height. So as I've said before, every every sprite in Pygame will need an image as well as a rectangle. So the image is going to be 32 pixels long and 32 pixels tall. And then, of course, we're going to fill the image uh, with a color. So self.image.fill. And I'm going to fill it with blue, but we haven't actually defined blue yet. So up here, we'll just go uh, blue. And we're going to be using RGB again, so we don't want any, we don't want any red, we don't want any green, but we want the most amount of blue that is possible. So we'll have no red, no green, but all the blue. And if you remember, 255 is the maximum amount of color you can get. So we're filling the image with blue, but now we need to create the rectangle, because every sprite in Pygame also needs a rectangle as well as an image. Self.rex equals self.image.get rect. So basically, we're just going to get the, we're just going to create a rectangle from the image we have set here. We can do self.rect.x equals self.x, and self.rect.y equals self.y, and you can think of a rect kind of like a hitbox, um, but we're setting the position of the rectangle to self.x and self.y, and we're forming the width and the height of the rectangle from the image by using self.image.get rect. And that is pretty much it for our block class. It's just going to be a blue square, really. But now we need to actually get to drawing the uh, drawing the walls. How we were creating the sprites before, we were just we were just creating an object in the new method. So say we wanted to create multiple walls. Well, we'd ha have to go like um, block, and then we need self and like whatever the x and the y is, and we'd have to do this loads of times, which isn't very efficient. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to create a method and it's going to be called create tile map. And it's going to take self as usual. And what we're going to do here is we're going to iterate through our tile map that we've set here. So we're going to go through every row and we're going to go through every column and we're going to check whether it's a B, whether it's a dot or whether it's a P. If it's a B, we're going to be creating a wall there. If it's a dot, we're going to be placing some grass there. And if it's a P, we're going to be placing the player there. So here we're going to be needing to use, um, we're going to create a for loop, so for, and then we'll do i row in enumerate tile map. Now, if you don't know what enumerate does, you can watch a video on it, I've made a video on it before, but I'll just explain briefly what it does here. We have two values here, we have i and row. So i will be set to the actual value of the item in the list, so i, in our case, will be this string right here, but then row is going to be set to the position of the list, so we'll be able to refer to the position. So I'll just quickly print out i as well as row, um, and then we can just call uh, create tile map right here. So if we just call self dot create tile map, so we're getting i is the position of the item in the list, and row is the actual content of the item in the list. So you can see down here the first item, which is zero. It's just our top row. So as you can see, we're not only getting the content from the list, but we're also getting the position. Now, if you don't really understand this, I recommend you go and watch my video on the enumerate function in Python. Um, but anyway, moving on. So we're going through each row in the tile map. Once we go through each row, we also want to go through each column of the tile map. So we can go for j column in enumerate, and then we'll enumerate through the rows. So this is like a nested for loop. And then we're going to check if the column is equal to B. 
we're going to create a block and we're going to pass in self as well as j which is going to be the x position and i which is going to be the y position and then if column equals p so if the column is p we're going to create a player and we'll have self and j which is the x position and i which is the y position and we're also going to want to remove player from down here now in new we want to call self.create tile map at the bottom now we should be good to run this so you can see we've got our we've created our tile map with the walls and if you notice if we compare this to our tile map, you can see we've got a row of blocks at the top going down the sides and down the sides as well as the bottom. And here we've got a row at the top, down the sides, down the sides at the bottom. We also have the same shape here as we have here, and the same shape here as we have here. So I'll just go over once again what we're doing in this for loop, because it is quite complicated. So basically, we're going to loop through this tile map. So we're going to loop through every item in the tile map, and Every item is a row in the grid. So this is item 0, item 1, item 2, and so on. But because we're using enumerate, we're not only going to get the content of the item, but we're also going to get the position in the list of the item. And we need this for, for determining where we're going to place it on the screen. So we're getting the content as well as the position. So we're going to iterate through this row as well. And we're going to get the position as well as the content of each item in this row. So we'll have 0, B, 1, B, 2, B, and so on. If the content is B, then we're going to create a block. And if the content is P, we're going to create a player. But notice how we're using J and I. Now, we're able to use J and I because we used enumerate right here. So J is going to be the X position, and I is going to be the Y position. So if we run it again... We can see that comparing this, comparing the grid to the pie game window, we can see we've got the same shape as the tile map. If you have any questions or comments about this, I know it was quite complicated, be sure to leave them down below. That's it for our tile map, so in the next episode we're going to be adding some graphics to our game. Otherwise that's it from me, cheers and goodbye.